scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So it matters that as we build people, the sequence of spiritual information be supplied so that... You see, the truths of scripture were designed to complement themselves. There is something you know that secures what you are about to know. And if, you, if there are gaps in our spiritual understanding, then that becomes the loophole for the devil to access and cause what was given by God to destroy us. The truth can kill. The truth can be used to kill. Just because it is truth does not mean it will liberate. It can be used to kill. Read the Bible and see how truth killed many people because it was misused. It's like a knife. You can hold the knife wrongly and the knife was not designed to kill you, but it can kill you. It can injure you. Praise the Lord. Was it not the sons of Sceva that went to attempt casting out a devil? And the Bible tells us the casualty they secured on account of the imbalance in their preparedness. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I, I want to share with us three very powerful principles. We're talking about growth. Yesterday, I began to teach us on the God of systems, that there is a systemic nature to growth and success. Are we together? That when we meet with the Lord... Our spiritual experience does not start with principles and, and um, methodologies. We start with an encounter. But that when we meet the Lord, then he begins to guide us, supplying the requisite knowledge it will take to excel in life. And let me remind us again that I did observe yesterday that our pursuit of God, please you have to get this, that our pursuit of God has no end. We will continue to seek him that even in heaven there is room to come up hither. Are we together? So we will continue to know him. But as far as my success and your success is concerned, there is an exact body of spiritual knowledge allocated for our victory that can be exhausted. Are we together? The belief that the things we need to know to be victorious are infinite is a deception. It's a popular thought but is wrong. There is an exact body of truth allocated for the victory of the saints. We can exhaust that curriculum. Not in our lifetime. In a few meaningful years of useful mentorship. And then now use that light to work practically in dominion. Dominion is not an impartation. There's no place in scripture where there was an impartation for dominion. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending this body of truth. The Bible calls it marvelous light. Marvelous light. Not just light. Marvelous light. That is on account of this marvelous light that in experience we show that we are a chosen people. That we are a royal priesthood that we've been called forth. There were many lights, but he said he made two great lights. One to rule the day and then the other to rule the night. So when we come in conferences like this, it is a feast of mysteries. Supplying by the spirit the truths that it will take, the exact truth. They are not suggestions. They are not opinions. 
they are not perspectives. It is the truth. Backed up by God's integrity. And when you find it, it says they are life to those who find them. It's not an information to those who find them. It's an information to those who know them. But it is life to those who find them. Are we blessed this morning? And so it matters that believers, you see, I will continue to reiterate that spiritual growth has exact indices, Pastor. You cannot just say you are growing imaginarily. You cannot even say you are growing just because you are in church. There are exact biblical indices to measure spiritual growth. Number one, very quickly I'll give to you, is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the Christ. It is the first biblical index to measure growth. The degree to which I conform to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. He says, my little children, the apostle speaking, of whom I travail until Christ be formed. That formation of Christ is growth. And then number two, the depth of your understanding, your comprehending the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom. It's very important. Your growth is also measured by the vastness and the stability of your spiritual understanding. Your ability to be unperturbed by life in experience on the strength of the truths that you know that can be proven in the face of real situations. There are many spiritual information that we have that are very useless to our Christian experience and we must allow the Holy Spirit guide our understanding that's why when Jesus was speaking he says I have many things to tell you he says but ye cannot bear them now and then he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he says he will guide you into all truth the realm of the spirit is a vast realm containing different information and not many of them are useful as far as our dispensation is concerned. We must be guided by the spirit of God to acquire only the information that will cause us to walk practically in dominion and to reveal the Christ. If you're blessed this morning, please say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The systemic nature of God brings predictability to your success. That means that you can know that what God has given me will be kept. Retention, the ability to retain anything is true power. More than having it, retention is proof of mastery. Whatever you have that you cannot keep, you did not get by understanding. Jesus was speaking in John 17. He says, all that you have given me, I have kept. You gave me, but I kept it. All that you have given me, I have kept. And none is lost except the son of perdition. And this that scripture may be fulfilled. Jesus was giving an explanation as to why Judas was lost. It was not a proof of my incompetence. It was to fulfill scripture. When he gives you anything you cannot keep, it was not gotten by understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I'm going to be sharing with us according to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. The mysteries of the kingdom. These are the truths by which we reign. Jesus spent time teaching the disciples on what he called the mysteries of the kingdom. Can we read together? It's projected one to read please. He answered and said unto them, Aha, uh -huh, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Please say after me, mysteries. There's nothing mystic about mysteries. They are simply hidden truths. Desire to be unfolded, but privy to a family of people. You have to understand this. I always would give this analogy. Pastor, if I come to your house, for instance, by reason of relationship with your dear wife, there is a way you can communicate to her without my knowing. And say, bring the wine, the red one, and I don't see your mouth moving, but she understands. It's called mysteries. And all those communication is flying all over my head and I cannot even understand. All I know is we were gisting. And the body languages, the eye signals are all coded languages. 
And so in the kingdom, we have a body of information allocated only for the saints. It is based on the excellency of this dimension of wisdom that we will dumbfound principalities and powers. Are we together now? The Bible says to be revealed to creation, the multifaceted wisdom of God. For instance, in the kingdom, it is, it is unusual to own things. When you own things in the kingdom, you are a rebel. We don't own things in the kingdom. We are only stewards. Owners in this kingdom are rebels. You may freely eat, but it's not yours. When he gave unto one five talent and two and one, he came back as the owner. They were stewards. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So the consciousness that you do not own anything already disengages you. It's impossible for affinity, lost, to grip your life when you don't own things. And then the responsibility of maintenance, you are relieved. The owner is mandated to take care of his estate. So it immediately heals you of several pressures. Just this revelation alone is therapeutic. So that child is not really my child. That child came from heaven through me. Abba, maintain your child. Let the resources pass through me. Then he becomes responsible. It is, it is difficult to own things. You don't fear the economy when you are not the maintainer and the sustainer of things. Let's touch on three principles. Just help those under the anointing. Of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I'm going to be sharing with you three very powerful principles. I believe with all my heart. You see... I came from a very interesting background. My grandfather was the founding fathers of one of the great denominations in the north. Um, and so I came from a very solid Christian background. I didn't have the opportunity to do many things. He was God all the way, straight up. But then there were many things that I saw and discerned as God began to prepare to use me that I knew were not correct. The gap in our spiritual understanding, the many propositions that could not be defended. I heard preachers say many things about God that could not be defended. We sang songs, we made proclamations, we made boastful statements. We claimed the nearness of God, but our results showed that he was far from us. And so that bothered me for a while. I didn't want to be a preacher. I wanted to be someone who would be a witness, a demonstrator of the reality of God to a generation. And that still is my pursuit. I only found out that preaching is one of the routes that makes that happen. And so I, I, every time I have the privilege by God's spirit to minister to God's people, I truly am careful the information that I give people. Because I have a conscience that will be vetted by God himself. I cannot supply an information that may just be right. It must be truthful. And so I found a way to vet my revelations by making myself the first guinea pig to every truth that comes from heaven. The things that I want to share with you, I submit to you in the name of the Lord. And I don't mean to insult your intelligence. Like I observed yesterday, this is a collection of a very enlightened people. And by no means am I trying to downplay your intellectual investments. But when it has to do with spiritual things, it is important to understand that flesh and blood cannot reveal this to you. He says, who do men say that I am? And he says, I know who thou art. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replies Peter and says, flesh and blood. There are realms of revelation that are not within the confines of flesh and blood. You must route it from a dimension higher than science. 
higher than intellect it will make use of science it will make use of intellect but it does not come from there hallelujah the first spiritual principle that i want to share this morning is called the law of the mind mighty god the law of the mind Psalm 78 and verse 41. I'll be as fast as I can so that we are done in good time. Psalm 78 and verse 41. Please read for me if you, are, if you can see it. One, two, read. Yea, they turned back and tempted God. Uh-huh. And limited the Holy One of Israel. For many years I read this scripture and it disturbed me. That a man can limit God. That is a statement that doesn't sound correct until I found out this principle and this spiritual law that I teach you that a possibility exists in this kingdom where men can limit God are we together although heaven is his throne the earth his footstool where can a man hide from his presence the psalmist said but that there is something a man can do in the earth that can limit the God of the universe and make him look as though powerless I found the cure for my limitations in this revelation. I found out that my experience is not a reflection of God's power. The lack of results that come in my life and remain in my life are not proof of God's incompetence. That there is something about my in understanding and, on, and lack of knowledge that can cause the most high to be limited. They limited the Holy One of Israel. The law of the mind. Please write it down. Everything in life is built twice. To last. It must first be built in the realm of the spirit. And then built physically. That anything that does not have a foundation in the realm of the spirit and ever appears physical will have to disappear it's a spiritual law and so god designed man now i've heard all kinds of teachings that man is a spirit he's a soul and he's a body well i agree but i disagree i thoroughly disagree no man is tripartite in operation but man is not tripartite man is a spirit that spirit lives in a body but that spirit cannot operate with the body because they are in two different dimensions and so there has to be a system of connecting both dimensions and god created an agency called a mind are we together to interface the realm of the spirit and the physical realm that becomes the system of connection between the spirit and the body so it gives that man duality of realms. That means he can relate in the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. So man is a spirit. That spirit is hosted in a container called the body. And given the mind containing the will, emotions and intellect to be able. These are faculties of expression. Are we together? So the spirit can only relate with the body through the mind. The only gateway. To the body to this realm is the mind the soul is simply a spirit that is conscious because of the mind so you don't separate man into spirit standing one side soul stand one side body stand one side no it's already confusing where what realm does that soul belong to because there are only two realms the spiritual and the physical now you are creating three entities that's where the confusion comes from the soul is still spirit only with an advantage of a faculty of expression to help it relate with the earth realm are we together on that now it is very important because most christians 
have not learned how to convert and transport spiritual realities from the realm of the spirit to this realm. Hebrews chapter 11 tells us now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It says it is the tangibility, the evidence of things not seen. It says for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says through faith we understand. Look at this scripture. That the walls, the systems were framed they had their tangibility by the word of god but the technology is that the things that were seen came from the things which do not appear that, that's where i'm driving at are we together now so that things that are seen are derived from things that are unseen 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 not unreal unseen unseen by the optical eyes unseen by a dimension not unreal are we together now? That means everything that we require is already a reality. The fact that you can desire it means it exists. Please listen. You do not have the ability to desire anything that does not exist. So the concept of creation is only creation from this realm. From the realm of the spirit is only a technology of transportation transporting spiritual realities from a dimension that is not earthly to give it frame in the earth realm are we together you have to understand what i'm teaching because this is how your wealth will come this is how your increase will come this is how the visions that you are seeing will find expression the law of the mind that realities are first formed in that realm of the mind before they find expression in the physical are we together? That your life is akin to a mirror. And everything you see in the physical is like a mirror. You don't remove something from your head by putting your hand in the mirror. You correct it here and the mirror corrects itself. That means our approach to growth has largely been wrong. We attempt to change things physically. And like I told you that there is a law that everything that comes to your life is a reflection of what is already in your mind. This is powerful and this is true. I used two people yesterday. Can I use them again? Any two gentlemen? Please not, not our, our ministers. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Please stand here. Please stand here. I, I like to use this example because I want you to understand. Please look up. Let's call this guy a preacher. Everybody say pastor. God forbid in Jesus' name. Huh? Let's call this guy an arm robber. Now, just call it in your mind. Don't, don't speak it. Are we together? Now, watch this. This guy is busy robbing people, destroying people's destinies, jumping the fence, doing all kinds of things. And we call him a robber. And then this guy is liberating people, causing people to know the things of God. And you call him a pastor. Remember you hate this guy. And then you love this guy. Correct? Now, walk with me. Let both of them suddenly be dead bodies. Suddenly. The preacher dies. This man dies. Who is on the ground? A dead body? No. Who is on the ground? A dead body. You don't call it a preacher dead body. You call it a dead body. You don't call it an armed robber dead body. You call it a dead body. Now they have become equal. Dead bodies. So who was really the preacher? Was it the body? The mind. A madman still has a spirit. But why is he not useful to you? Because the madness hijacked the interface that makes for sanity between the realm of the spirit is why when Jesus saw madness it, it he knew that that madness was a serious he was not just a miracle worker he was a statement that Satan would come and interface the bridge between the realm of the spirit and this realm that means I do not have to do anything to your physical body whatever can cause me to stand and hijack the delivery system from the realm of the spirit to this realm i have destroyed you eventually it will be the same thing as cutting the supply of water from a plant it will root out your body will show that your mind died since are we together 
Now, the mind, the body does not have a will on its own. It's a vehicle of execution. Please understand this. That means if this guy robs this guy, the body only obeyed an instruction coming from the mind. Are we together? That means the foolish decisions that many of us take, the body is innocent. The body is obedient. So we have to correct the giver of that instruction. So that your physical reality now begins to subscribe to a new intelligence. Are we together now? When this guy stands to preach, when this guy stands to minister, the body is only an executor. The preacher is in the mind. So who is really poor? Don't talk. And who is really rich? Who is really educated and who is really dull? Who is really broken and who is really healed? It's deception to focus on this physical realm. Again, let me give another example, respectfully so. Have you seen someone who you gave a nice shirt, wonderful shirt, white, just like what a dear pastor is putting on and you gave that person that shirt and in 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 two months i mean that whole thing i'd be you are it's not brown it's not white have you seen those kind of things now let me tell you what happened the the shirt is reflecting the health of the mind are we together and when you gave it to another person the shirt started looking like what is in there please listen to me very truthfully that your mind is very powerful. The Bible calls it the salvation of your soul. That the end of your faith, transformation through the renewal of the mind, is the culmination of your faith experience. That means your being born again is not complete until there is a system of transformation that permits this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He was speaking to a people who were already saved. The impact of your spirit is wonderful, but you will still live a useless life until the reality of that transformation finds expression. The Bible doesn't talk so much about the body because the body is an executor. Are we together now? The real miracle is the mind. Is God speaking to us? Genesis chapter 11, please. Genesis chapter 11. The Bible talks about a man called Nimrod, the son of Cush. And then the Bible says that he led a group of people to build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens. Correct? Now, this morning, I'm not arguing about the theological, the whole debate, whether it was a spiritual building or physical. We know there was a building. And there is a morale there. Let's go to verse 4, please. Or verse 3. Let's start from verse 3. Genesis 11, please, and verse 3. Someone is changing. And they said to one another, Goto, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, now listen, they've not started the building. Nimrod Kush is proposing like a manifesto. Gentlemen, let's come together and build something that will reach the heavens. And he says, whose top may reach unto the heavens, let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. If you're a Christian, look at verse 5. One, two, read with me, please. Keep it at verse 5. While they were discussing, God was seeing a building rising. And God said, who is building? God saw that the construction had finished. It's in your Bible. They had not laid one physical block. But in the realm of the spirit, as their minds were receiving it, what God was seeing is a structure finished. The Bible says God came down. Remember, Satan is not in this scripture. The Holy Ghost is not in this scripture. Only men and the power of the minds he gave them. I show you how you can build that business. Because when God talks to you, he talks like he's talking to himself. He will tell you, take over Lagos. And as he's talking to you, you don't know that he's giving you Lagos already. But the technology to make it real is what I show you. Please keep that scripture there. 
the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built dead, finished, done. You argue with that, let's go to the next verse. Verse 6, here is God testifying. Ready? Please read. <laughs> and the Lord said, behold, the people is one and all have one language. Now listen, and this they begin to do. Stop. Now he's talking to their realm. I saw that the people is one and they are about to do what was finished. And now nothing, nothing will be restrained from them which they have. Talk to me. So the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, please give it to us. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we or think. Now listen, ask or think, ask or think. If I say sit here or here, it means either way carries equal value. That means there are two prayer warriors in your life. Your mind and your mouth are both praying. That God is a listener to two dimensions of prayer request. The one that comes from your lips changed my life. And the one your mind says, don't bother again, Lord, I'm comfortable. Is saying that God is able to do whatever they are saying. Were you ever taught that your mind is a prayer warrior? That it consistently sends requests about your destiny to the throne can do above all we ask not and think or think so could your situation be an answered prayer is it possible that the lack of growth is God honoring you for the several requests that continue to go from your mind to heaven keep us this way oh God and he says, I gave you a will and I must honor it. Your mouth says, I'm rising. But your mind says, it's all right. Just I changed my mind. Huh. Are we together? They limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. The Holy One wanting to reveal his multifaceted possibilities. But the channel that gives him expression to the earth realm was limited by a man's understanding. This is very powerful. Believers hear me. Many spiritual people will never succeed because of this simple reason. Success is not really in doing. Success is attracted by the transition that happens in your mind. Which is a reflection of what you are becoming. Every realm of spiritual understanding and mental development has possibilities that accrue to that realm. An attempt to attract a reality that is higher than your mental level is only like pulling a rubber ring. It will go back. That's why many of our results are short-lived. They did not come with growth. They only came with desire and sometimes ego. If you have 200 members and there are 1,000 members here, it's impossible for them to remain 200. They must match. It's a law. Not invented by science invented and maintained by God's own integrity show me a man who stays in one tiny room with no privilege let your mind you see the beautiful thing is that you don't need a visa to travel here you don't need to go to any consular office you can dream with God and he takes you to that realm this is the technology of growth the Holy Ghost takes your mind to your future. The moment your mind gets there, it comes and takes your body to go and join it. So anywhere, listen, when you stop moving, it's because your mind stopped traveling. Please believe what I'm telling you. Realities are first fear a man who has arrived in his mind 
because God testifying said no power in existence sustains the ability to stop such a man could that man be you this morning who has gone with God to dimensions I know that it looks like nothing good can come out of Nazareth I know as it is right now there's no testimony hmm. Nathaniel said can anything good come out of Nazareth and Jesus at age 12 was in the temple traveling traveling the word traveling Please listen to me. If you're a businessman here, this is a very powerful secret. It will never come just by trying to, you know, do a lot of physical things. Leave all of that. You don't need to be embarrassed that you cannot buy the shoe now. There's no shame there. Anybody who laughs at you is ignorant and they do not understand the power of transition that comes in life. Why fake what can be real? Stay and travel with God and watch him lift you. Sometimes overnight. Is God speaking to us? Any successful person who is very honest and open with you will tell you that once upon a time they never, they, they did not know how this will happen. All they knew was that God said it and I believe it and he begins to indoctrinate their understanding. That's why he shows you dreams because we think in pictures. When your mind captures it, it's impossible for you to leave it. So whilst you are sitting here, he shows you the nations watching you minister, watching your products go beyond the shores of this country and Africa. And while he's doing that, you don't know anybody. While he's doing that, not even your neighbor is interested in what you offer. Don't mind your neighbor. He doesn't hate you. He's only ignorant. Finish your business with God. And I tell you, a generation will stand as attention. To honor the God. See, please listen, listen, listen. Believe what I'm telling you and you stop being angry at your environment. The real secret of success is you and God. Not what you do, who you are. What you do will continue to become who you are. That's why promotion never blesses people sustainably. They grow. I'm, I'm not insulting you. A lot of people say once I'm promoted, then they are promoted and then nothing really happens. Then they change a job, nothing really happens. Because the law is that it will always reflect you. But grow here. Leave the chains around you. Just keep growing. And you watch the power of the laws of the spirit. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Is there any chain that can hold a man who has grown out here? If I capture your hands and I lock you in prison and you are Mandela, even after 20 years, you are a president. A president is a president and you will come out and truly be it. So when they took the body of Joseph to the prison, they didn't know that it was only the body that was there. The mind continued to dream. I'm a savior. I'm a lifter. This is the cure for the anger that we have about our background. Why did my mother marry my father? Did she see him? All of that, that, that is not only sinful, it's unnecessary. Are we together? There is a bailout system. One simple law. Dream with God. That whilst you are standing here, I may not have the transport to go back, but I'm not ashamed. Listen, don't rush where you are. You will miss where you are living today. A day will come, you will turn back. If you ever tell people you were here, they would not believe you. Or enjoy the process with honor while you move because you know inevitably you're on your way going. Oh yes, yes, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true that men can change, it's true that transitions and translations are still real, it is true that people continue to upgrade to higher versions of themselves, don't be ashamed of your pain, don't be ashamed of the bills, don't be ashamed of the tears, if you need to cry, cry, cry while your mind travels, because it's about to pick your body. Some of you, while you are sitting in this conference, just right now, 
your mind has already gotten there and is holding your body no power hear me there is no divination and no enchantment that sustains the ability to keep a man down who has gone up these are the justice systems of God it is proof that he is just and one Lord who is rich unto all I can find my way out of life it may not be a cause that your mother didn't go to school it is not a cause that your father was not educated it's, it's not a cause that out of 12 siblings you are the first to ever rise he takes you here while they laugh yes Jesus died but he only died for three days he didn't die forever while they were laughing at the dead Jesus a newer version was already up the same way they laugh at you he said rejoice not over me my enemies I know I came to Lagos and you met me under the bridge last week last week is not today oh I'm in a conference This is the reason why it is powerful to honor all men because you don't know what part of their growth imagine the person who greeted Obasanjo the last time before he came out of prison if that was a wise man he would greet him and give him how many plates of food and say eat sir I'm the chef here eat it's painful to miss your lifting because of lack of discernment just because you see that brother sitting down and his shoe looks like it's not a testimony. His mind has gotten it. His mind is in a boutique shopping for the higher version of him. Just because the preacher laid hands on 50 people and nobody got healed. He left that meeting like a funeral. What happened? Did you really call me, oh God? He prophesied every word of knowledge was wrong. You felt bad for him and said, why didn't you just preach and sit down? While he was doing that, the prophet accessing the depths of the spirit. Three years later, you step into a meeting and remember him. Just when you are about to laugh like before he calls your name. No. Once upon a time, Peter, I could not heal the epileptic patient. But now my shadow... I will not always remain an amateur. There is growth in the spirit. Rejoice not over my yesterday. That laughter will embarrass you tomorrow. Rejoice not over my yesterday. Please sit down. Ah! Alagbara, you are the mighty God. Help me. Hey, Latobiji. I continue blasting tongues and shake off that feeling of fear. I refuse to be ashamed of my faith in the name of Jesus. Growth is a possibility in this kingdom. Lifting is a possibility. The grace I did not have yesterday, I can have today. The realm I did not attain yesterday, I can attain today. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Please sit down. Please sit down. Some of you, as, as we share the grace this, this, this morning and into the afternoon, the anger you will carry back to your house, you will shut the door and blast in tongues and say, why was I about to borrow a shoe? I will wear the one I have. Why was I about to borrow a shirt? Why was I about to tell lies that my carpenter father was my uncle? He is my father. So that you will be witnesses when he lifts me. 
Listen, let me tell you this. Our generation has no regard for people's growth. When they see people grow, they say he came out of nowhere. She came out, nobody comes out of nowhere. While they are dreaming with God, they don't look it. When Solomon was dreaming with God and receiving something, if you were Solomon's roommate, you would not know something had come upon him. Hmm. Do you not know that while you are sitting now, you are running? I told you yesterday that the secret to run is to sit down. The secret to speed is to wait. Don't run by running. You run by waiting. And when he's done with you, you will find out that any door takes you there. Because you were already there. As it is in your mind, so it will be in your life. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. He didn't say so he will become, so he already is. Satan knows this. So this is what he comes to do. When he comes to you, he projects, he doesn't touch you. He only projects a picture of failure. Put two by two. You've been a preacher in Lagos. Is this how ministry should grow? And while you keep watching, like the flock of Jacob, you begin to see what you are seeing in your life. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop. Till my life looks like him. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising sons and daughters in this place. And he won't stop, no, he won't stop till your life looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till my life looks like him. Listen. But he won't stop till your life looks like him. You may cry, but he won't stop till your life looks like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till my life looks like him. Listen now. Many of us think the secret to change is to acquire physical things. It's only a secret to frustration. Everything is connected to something in the realm of the spirit. And if it is not in your mind, I promise you that it will leave you. Please hear me. I know why growth may not be happening to you. I know why growth may not be happening to you. The reason is because our society cannot see into the realm of the spirit so they deceptfully look at your persona and while it is true that eventually it should reflect what is in your mind but it doesn't start from the beginning so the embarrassment nobody wants to look like a failure so we quickly go to outsource things that tries to coin a picture of what is not there and we continue to multiply pain there is nobility in growth that you pay the price go back and open that notebook that you stopped writing on since five years ago because he said lord i can't continue to mock myself like this while he's looking from heaven did you not know that satan is only coming to you because he's seen something being built the thief cometh not that means he has no business coming except he sees what is stealable killable The thief cometh not. The reason why the devil doesn't bother certain people is not because they love God. It's because he doesn't see anything that is worth his presence. I hope you know that Satan is not, he's not omnipresent. To get his attention, you must do something striking. So he lets you alone while he goes to disrupt someone. I've looked at this family. I never saw this construction. Where is this coming from? The grandfather could not have it. 
the grandmother could not have it but what i see being built in the realm of the spirit is a life and a destiny full of color who is this and he comes to find out and then he lies to you and so the bible says why we look not at the things that are seen but we look at the things unseen look at the things unseen because they can be seen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change ah rejoice not over me oh rejoice not over me don't don't rejoice that nobody has a job in our family no problem don't rejoice that is joblessness that is making you a faithful worker in church you are such a jobless young man you are moving around you would have been married now but look at this this ushering thing is killing your destiny and you feel stupid for being an usher keep watching when god is done with you eh? he will not only lift you he will restore you you see that bring you to a position as though nothing no lag ever happened in your life your enemy opens the office and there you are seated even praying in tongues he says it's a joke he says it's not a joke god is a lifter and he has brought me here please i want you to guard your mind jealously no matter what happens to you we build garages for our cars we build stores and wardrobes for our clothes but we don't build a protection for our minds a car will come and go your clothes will come and go preserve your mind for out of it comes the issues of life are we together can i steal a few minutes to share one more key oh dear i wish i had time <laughs> this is a sunday service don't forget i hope you didn't leave food on fire <laughs> amen praise the lord my life changed as I have opened myself to be mentored by profoundly great people I have found out that this is a common string something happened to their minds and it changed their lives that their lives eventually became an expression of the dexterity of their minds hallelujah law number two Can you pray in tongues while I turn there? Remember, this is a conference. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. The second key to growth, the second key to lifting is understanding men. The law of men. <laughs> that man as an entity has to be studied for you to succeed. It is not enough to know God. In as much as I've shared with you about the power of the mind. The psalmist said something very interesting. He said, when I consider the works of your hands, the lilies and all of that, then he said, what is man? That thou art mindful, concerned of, nor the son of man, he says, that thou visitest him. Do you know what brought the psalmist to this realization? When you study all through scripture, you see the unashamedness in God's seeking man. Not just man seeking God. For a while he would abandon man. And say you are not serious. I leave you to your enemies. And then on his own. Like a man in love. And says I'm not doing again. And after two days. He just asks and says are you there? Fine. It's not are you there. He's saying look I, I don't know the name of what is happening to me. But are you still. God is not ashamed to present his vulnerability before men that while the worship in heaven is going on suddenly he becomes distracted and he looks at man and he still comes to man he will raise a prophet 
to say, oh yeah, man, it's okay. Just come to me. And man will casually, arrogantly come back to God and God will receive him seriously. And so the psalmist was bothered. God, did you lose your intelligence? Can't you wipe man and start another humanoid species? What is a man that you must fix no matter how damaged? What is man? What did you put in man that we are not aware of? To the point that you come to visit him. You died for him. Won the victory. Sat on the throne and you are still interceding. Abba. You gave him the Holy Spirit on earth. And then you are there at the right hand of the father. And you are still not quiet. You are interceding. And you are still about your Melchizedek priesthood. What is man? If God is asking that question, you should ask God. What is man that I have refused to rise? What is man that I must depend on to rise? This is the world of men. And not knowing this will cost you anything good. Praise the Lord. Pastor, every time God wants to help Israel, he will send Jacob. He sends a word to Jacob for the sake of Israel. Every time God wants to help a man, he sends a man. You've heard me say it for some of you and I will repeat it again that all blessings come from God through men to men. Nothing comes from God to men. It looks like it comes from God to men. But the truth is that everything comes from God through men to men. That means if God agrees and a man refuses, the answer in your destiny is no. We're teaching. That's why I'm... God says yes. A man says no. In a strange way, your answer will be no. Abraham is in a vision with God and he sees that the captivity will last only 400 years, correct? And then the difficulty in preparing Moses adds 30 extra years to their captivity and God had to make do with that script because it took that long for Moses to be ready. Are we together? Another instance, David is in the wilderness having visions of the throne as a little shepherd boy, seeing that he would become a king. Saul offends God and God rejects him. Yet God cannot anoint David because a man in between David and Saul refused to agree. It's in your Bible. So God comes down to Samuel and says, Samuel, please, how long will you weep? Seeing that I've rejected Saul, you are delaying someone else's destiny. I intend to have started, but because you are a man and you refused, my own plans is delayed. Take on your horn, go to the house of Jesse. Couldn't he bypass him? Please understand this. We have taught for many years that you don't need a man to rise. If you are saying that to express God's sovereignty and might, you are right. But if you are saying that to mean that God can do without men, he has chosen to incorporate men. And believe me, if you ignore men, you will pay for it. This is the world of men. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. There are men who you cannot cast. God will only make them like you for you to pass that gate. Not everybody can be casted and can be bound. There are men who are gatekeepers. They are the kinds that the Bible says when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes them to be at peace with you. Otherwise, you will not pass. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. Listen, listen, listen. 
please settle down listen this is make sure you're not just excited you are getting what i'm telling you because this is very powerful very powerful great business people great preachers great intellectuals but they ignored men and they are paying for it today this is a world of men please hear me this is a world of men believers let's wake up this is a world of men those who know this rise as if satan does not exist those who have ignored men when jesus meets with saul pastor who would later become paul even an encounter with jesus did not stop him from meeting men jesus referred him back to men for the continuity of his lifting go to the house of judah although you've met me still go there a man will come jesus christ the son of the living god who was a the word walked under a close heaven for 30 years till he met a man the word your word who became flesh the logos of the father walked under a close heaven until he met a man called john the baptist and john wondered ah, jesus ah, he said so far it to be so it's an ordinance if you ignore me my heavens will close abraham was a man who continued to wallow in confusion until he met a strange being called Melchizedek, the king of an ancient city of Salem. And he gave him a tithe of all and Melchizedek blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. To the point that Jesus had to become a man to help men. He did not help men as God. Today he's on the throne as a man. He didn't change back. The man, Jesus, is still on the throne. This is the world of men. If you ignore men, God didn't ignore men. You shouldn't. It's lack of wisdom to ignore men. Men are gatekeepers of the anointing. Men are gatekeepers of influence. Men are gatekeepers of endorsements. There are times you do not have access to the gate. You will need a man who is already at the gate to speak for you. The territory has been designed to listen to his voice. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Not God, the king. A man can send for another man and bring him out of a dungeon. It comes from God through men to men. Are we together? There are things in the Bible that did not happen because God said it should happen. It happened because men decided to make it happen. And God honored it in a very strange way. Relationships are very powerful. They are called advantageous connections. Everything grows and multiplies on the basis of relationship. Please listen. That advantageous connection in your life. When God wants to lift you, he will send a man. The credibility of men matter to our growth. The endorsement of men, it matters what they say about you. Don't ignore men and say it doesn't matter. No. They limited the Holy One. Jesus only arrived because Anna the prophetess, a man, was praying his coming. He didn't just arrive because he left heaven and arrived. No, 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 no. A woman was praying for his arrival. Simeon the prophet praying for his arrival. The body of Jesus is hanging on that cross and no angel could bring it down except a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. He went to another man and requested the body of God to come down. Who have you ignored? Who came to you as an answer to a prayer and you ignored? God sent a man as an answer to your prayer. And he said, what is there? I can't watch what is there with Papa. Must he be the one to pray for me? This was the mistake. The simple mistake of Saul was ignoring men. That was it. Saul did not offend anybody. He did not wait for the man ordained by God to offer sacrifices. He did it himself. And Samuel came and said, you have done foolishly. Men are not just men. Even among the stars, one differed from another in glory. 
please listen to me. Many of us have ignored men. There is a law that your lifting is men dependent. God is limited when men do not give him space. I wish what I were saying were not true, but it is true. You are being blessed in this conference now, not because God chose today. No. The day men are available becomes your today. If the pastor, if your pastor shifted this conference, the will of God must shift too for you. Because a man, is, is it not a... <laughs> Now watch this. We are going to pray shortly. He was going to share the testimony. Many of you were blessed by Victoria's ministration, powerful ministration, and all the ministrations and all the preachers and everybody because a man agreed with God and chose the date for your deliverance. Can you imagine that? It was not God that chose the date. A man sat down and said, I agree, Lord, come within this period and lift your people. And God honored it. Please listen. It is very powerful. You ignore men, you will pay the price. It's true. The ark was supposed to be carried by men. They invented a cart. And then, when the cart was about to fall, an innocent man came to hold it and died, and the cart didn't fall. Listen to me. Men are true gifts from God. The moment you begin to pray, don't wait for a lot. Look out for men. When you see a man come and start rejoicing, because God is sending breakthrough. I preached a message years ago called the gift of men. The true proof of favor is not money. The true proof of favor is the hearts of men. When God gives you the hearts of men, you are really favored. Because when you have the heart of a man, you have everything. My son, give me your heart. A man can give you his hand and his resources and you would and not love you. Please, if you're in ministry here, listen. This is a grace you must need. If you want church to grow, you will need men that agree with you and can take that risk to hold your hands and build with you. It is in the multitude of men that a king's honor lies, not estate men in ancient times any king who had men was feared so they would conquer people and carry their men not necessarily their land their men for God so loved men he came and died to redeem men your job is not in heaven your job today as we talk is in this city in the hand of a man consider his appointment and your prayer is answered and you think and you think that is not an issue contracts of millions are hanging not in the realm of the spirit being suspended by the wheels of men listen a man is so important that when God wants to rescue his people he looks for a man of influence and the only available man who could hear him was Joseph but Joseph was in a prison having a dream will not help him so God has to use an unbeliever called Pharaoh to have a dream that is prophetic and then they now call another man to interpret it the same way Nebuchadnezzar the same way Darius look at the men God had to make do with if you get what I'm telling you today you can sit down and pray and say, Lord, who have you anointed to lift me? Who has my eyes refused to see? Who is responsible for my lifting? It can be after this service. You will quickly, quickly buy plantain and run to that man and say, I just came to greet you. He said, oh, I'm busy. He said, no problem. You are not being foolish. You are connecting to men for your lifting. Men are very powerful. My life today has not just been glorified at the mercy of God alone, but also at the mercy of men.
is the reason why men are a big deal to me. I don't ignore men. I don't dishonor men. Many of us do so to our peril. Our sincere loved ones do so. You see a music artist and say, what is there? Is it not just God that is the giver of all? That statement alone, you will pay for it. Because every time you despise a man, you despise what he or she carries. Honor is the key to access. Everybody and everything you dishonor, you authorize that that grace should run away from you. So you can listen to pastor's message in the secret and despise him in the open. The anointing will never bless you, even if you fall down. I tell you why it's hard for people to rise. These are the systems of the kingdom. The God of systems. The lifter of men. Someone can come to another man and say, I have discerned that there is so much grace on your life. You came into Lagos and in two, in two years, you have five houses. In two years, all your children have gone to school. There must be something in you, man. Can I talk about the anointing and then we'll pray? Because this anointing thing I want to talk about now is the last law, the law of spiritual empowerment. But I may not have the time to talk about it. It's the reason why I spoke to you about men. I have tried to obtain things in my life through the years that proved very difficult. And every time I prayed, God spoke to me as if I already had them. But then I met certain men. And I was amazed at how easy my life became. I remember years ago, I had the privilege of meeting a man who would later become a general in the army. This man's heart was so connected to me like Jonathan and David. There was nothing I wanted that this man would not take as a case over his head. I remember one time my passport expired and then I wanted to renew it. He wore his army uniform, carried his entire, um, yes, and entered the passport office. People said he's a general son. I just looked at them. I said, I know a man. Who, I know God, but I know men. That's why you need favor with God and favor with men. You can have favor with God alone. You will grow spiritually. You will have visions. You will know him. But you will suffer on earth. Because the favor that works on earth is favor with men. Listen. Listen. Please listen. Jesus green wisdom statue favor with God and men. That was why he could ask that a man's donkey be brought to him. Are we together? I remember that time and I watched with shock. The man entered everywhere. You know how these uh, precious military people just walked in and all the access. And um, within minutes, I was done. I said, ah, God, keep this kind of people around my life. You do ministry like this, why will you be sad? I mean, when there are all kinds of men around, please, your prayer should be, Lord, who are you lifting? Help me to help hold that person while he's rising. Because when you contribute to a man's lifting, he will never forget you. You can change the future, but you can't change history. What has happened has happened. Some of you today, a few years from now, when God would have honored you, you will come back and meet pastor and buy him one car and buy his wife a car and say pastor you may not remember me but last year by this time i i strolled my way as though going to fall on top of a bridge to enter your church to sit at the back because life could not answer but it was based on your platform that i rose and i have vowed that every time god leaves me you must eat of it there are people who have covenanted their success to others. Go 
those kind of people, the only thing that will go wrong in their life is hellfire. But as far as earth is concerned, God has settled them. There are men who have found that every estate they build, your house must be there because it was through your platform you lifted them. There's nothing the devil can do about it. These are the systems of the kingdom. Which man did you ignore in your life? When God wants to anoint you, he doesn't anoint you through a jar of oil. A jar of oil does not carry the anointing. A jar of oil only carries oil. The anointing is resident with men. Oil has never anointed anybody. A horn has never anointed anybody. A horn comes from a ram. The anointing comes from God through men. If a man does not touch that horn, you can pour everything you want to pour and nothing will change in your life. Please listen to me. I apologize, I've taken a few minutes, but we cannot waste this atmosphere. We're about to pray. It says, but my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil the law of spiritual empowerment that the grace upon your life is what controls what comes around you I can know what is on you by what I see around you I can know what is upon your life by the testimonies that recycle around you I can know the level of grace you carry by the possibilities that your life commands if it is not there, it is not there. Are we together? Yes. That it is true that God anoints men. It is true that God lifts men. It is true that God helps men. He gives power to the faint. And those who have no mighty increased strength. He does that by putting something upon your life. That will cause a generation to come at a standstill. Our generation is too busy to be called together by common things. It will take the bush burning to attract Moses. There has to be more than science. There has to be more than philosophy. If it is by the finger of God, then it can call the attention of creation. Listen to me. God brought us to this conference to put something afresh again that will lift you to a dimension. I have seen the power and the excellency of spiritual empowerment bring for me a weak person with no door opening and let that person have the privilege of obtaining genuine grace from a man and I show you a sign and a wonder. It is not difficult. It is only the grace on you that makes it so. Every mountain is relative to the anointing that confronts it. There are anointings that can trivialize what looks like a mountain. A mountain is relative. Please hear me, people of God. I share the burden of your pastor to tell you, I know he put this conference because it looks like the economy is challenging. It looks like a lot of things are happening, but there is enough grace. How God anointed Jesus. Not that he was anointed. Look at the extent to which he was anointed. With the Holy Ghost and with power then he went about doing good. It takes more than a good heart to do good. It takes the anointing. Yeah. Holy fire burn upon my altar from within me spirit to take over holy fire burn upon my altar holy fire burn upon my altar from within me spirit to take over holy fire burn Holy fire, holy fire, holy fire, burn upon my own. We're about to
have to pray. Something will come upon your life that will reward your sacrifice in this conference. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Many years ago, I had the privilege of meeting a man of God. I was researching about God's generals, Pastor. I wanted to know who had met with the generals that was alive and had put in his heart to study them. Because the day I took God's generals to read, it was as if I was reading about my relatives. Something in me could not leave that book. It was as if a baton was looking for me. And then when I heard that that man had met a number of the generals and those they had met, I went to go and meet him and I said, please, I came. I want you to talk to me. What did the general say? And I remember him saying, Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumron, he said, do not die with this anointing. That every time you are old, find young men. Find people empowered with the spirit. Transfer these possibilities to them. I said, that's it. That's it. I have come to connect to that lineage. Because there is a generation in need of this pattern. We cannot talk about the things that happen as history. And stop there. Men carrying the anointing of the spirit. I remember that day I started having encounters after that time. Now, my life has been full of encounters. I'm sorry I'm talking about myself. It's not any means to be arrogant at all. I just want to, as we pray, to just share this with you. And I remember one of the nights I met this interesting personality. After we finished talking, it was like an impartation happened and he turned and began to go. And I asked him, I said, sir, you did not tell me your name. And then he walked a while and turned to me and said, Paul, and he turned and continued moving. The very apostle that wrote two thirds of the New Testament. And the spirit of revelation came upon me in a strange way. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. Let me tell you, mantles are real. Unctions are real. Graces are real. If you have not captured them in your life, you will think people are lying. The possibilities in our lives are not governed just by our desires. They are governed by the graces that we can host. God is able to make all grace because there are many. He's not only one. So we are going to pray. There are people here who desire certain graces. I can share with you stories upon stories upon stories. And the product of many anointings. Many anointings. Many anointings. I went a few years ago, Pastor. The Lord gave me an instruction to go and meet God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. And I went down, carried a seed, and went down to Canaan land, and, you know, to sow and honor his grace. And when I was done, I came out, and the Holy Spirit asked me to place my hand on the ground, right there. And I placed my hand on the ground there. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. Please hear me. If you see men in the flesh, you will never receive anything. If you can see me as I'm taking. If you discern that I am not just a person, Elijah was saying. I'm a system. Embodied in a person. Men are not just men. They are continuity of a program. Don't mind the bodies. Look at the agenda through men. Let me tell you sincerely, many of the people you see are carrying what is older than them. It's ancient. The bodies are the only ones who are modern. And if you sustain the eyes to see, our generation has lost the honor of reception. This is why very few people are anointed. It's not God's desire to have just a few people. No, born or not a few. He wants many vessels. But the reason why the vessels are small is because we see men in the flesh. We are going to pray. When God wants to lift you, he brings a man. My life is a product of many graces. Please rise up, everybody. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. 
and say, He's my son. Attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.